branches from the east afar, when they saw this wondrous star, when to find the king of nations and to offer their oblations to the child, the newborn king, to the child, the newborn king. Guided by the star they found, him whose praise the ages sound, we to have a star to guide us, which forever will provide us with the light to find our Lord, with the light to find our Lord. And this star as bright as day, that will never lead us astray, with this message so appealing, is the word of God revealing, Christ the way, the truth, the life, Christ the way, the truth, the life. Welcome on this Epiphany evening, January 6th, to Family of Christ, to this home, this house of God, as we get to do a blessing of our homes later in this service, but as we also recognize how the house, the home of Jesus was blessed by the wise men coming from the east. That's what Epiphany is about. It's a time that we remember the star, we remember the light of Christ that was shown to us in the world. So we do a little bit of our service of light and we invite you to hear some of the passages that proclaim that God was going to let that light guide the nations and guide us. Kate will start us off. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and lived among us. And we have beheld Christ's glory. To us a child is born, and to us a son is given. In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Almighty and ever-living God, you revealed the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. 
Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands, and accept our lives as the treasures we offer in your praise and for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We just sang joyous light of glory, recognizing that our Heavenly Father has all things within his hands. And we've just gone through a tumultuous day within our nation. We have a prayer for uh, the conflict, the civic distress that we may feel that we're under, recognizing an openness of prayer for all parties that are involved. Let us pray. Rise up and come to our help, merciful God, for we are in need. Our spirits get weighed down with fear. Our bodies feel as fragile as the dust from which we came. All that we have trusted seems hidden from sight. Although this moment has come upon our nation, you have not forgotten us. We do not trust in our own power or strength, but in your steadfast love in every generation. Show us your face in this time of trial. Remind us of your faithfulness and save us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Isaiah was writing to a people that were wondering what the future was about. They had just come home to disruption in their own communities, and yet Isaiah promises that In fact, they are to look to the light that God has shown them. Here, the prophecy of Isaiah that we take for the wise men coming to see Jesus, but it actually is a word for all of us. From Isaiah chapter 60, beginning at the first verse. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. And thick darkness the people's. But the Lord will arise upon you. And the glory of the Lord will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light. And rulers to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away. And your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. And your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. And the wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. Young camels of Midian and Ephah, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense. And shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. In our Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is the child who's been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Now, when King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all of the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. Well, they told him from the prophet Micah, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Well, then Herod, he called for the Magi, and he learned from them the exact time that the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search, search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. 
Now, when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and they paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to King Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. King Herod had his way of seeing the world, and he was shaken by what he had heard. He had a fear of the future, and we're told in the very beginning of that lesson that when the king was afraid, everyone else became afraid too. That he had his power, he had his privileges, he had his city, and he was trying to, trying to control everything that was there. And the religious authorities, he, he sought to augment his view. After all, he thought that the religion had promised that Jerusalem would be the center where everything was supposed to come. Everything was supposed to come right to that center. I want to take us into that moment when the king was afraid, everybody else was afraid too. And in fact, in conversations that I've had over these, past, uh, over these past days, and even with our confirmation students who are online with us, I just ask them to list some of the fears, the fears that we have to acknowledge, and in fact, we should acknowledge and should know about as we, uh, as we recognize that we don't always get what we expect. We don't always have control of all the events surrounding us, we do, have, uh, we do have wonderings and questionings about the future that is unknown, and maybe even a little bit of doubt that we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Some of the confirmation students talked about health issues, health issues for siblings, and health issues for grandparents, and for, and for parents, and for people that were around them wondering if, uh, wondering if COVID was going to just continue on to wear us down. And they were pretty verbal about it and the worries that they could have about some of the, the health issues that were around. They don't want people to suffer. We don't know what to expect. And yet we hold on to the promise that God is with us. So we, we look and we watch. The fear was the first part of the story of that epiphany. That the fear that God was doing something and we just didn't have control of it. And you know what? We don't. God is with us. And God's loving concern is actually to guide us. Guide us in a path that will bring life to us. Guide us in a way that we'll be able to offer our gifts, offer ourselves, and find that we come, to, we come to a place that we weren't expecting, and yet God is there. That God was not in Jerusalem where the Magi were looking at first, thinking, obviously, that must be in the high political place. But instead, God was in a house, in a small town, not in the big city, but instead in a little burg called Bethlehem. And that God was not going to operate necessarily through the high and mighty, but God was going to operate through a baby, through a child. I don't think they understood where that was going, but they realized that their hopes, their hopes could now be placed that God knows what God is doing, and we can trust that light. Where do we see the light? Where do we see the stars that are leading us? There's times when somebody can just bring something of joy into, uh, into somebody's life, something very simple. When God makes you realize something that you've needed to realize all along, 
and you find yourself working through and struggling through and suddenly there's a light that you realize God is there. When I asked uh, my office manager, uh, Amy, what it was for lights in her house and her life, she said that there was a verse that came to her, a verse that was given to her that just expanded, that said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding to know that God is going to be with you. And then she said it's those small things, those smiles that you get that can be very reassuring at times. What I understood as our kids in our confirmation class were talking about, that just the fact that they could play basketball, they could hope for health and hope for, hope for care for their siblings, uh, find that there was going to be uh, some, some time when COVID was going to be conquered, when there was an anticipation that we were working together, that there was unity. And when we started talking about the fact that we have hopes that even when we feel so divided as a nation, that maybe we can come together, talk together, and that God can work through us. Well, I find, for me, it usually comes in a devotion usually comes in a time when the darkness is even darker and I sometimes realize that I can't trust in my own understanding. I have to let go of some of my fears, let go of some things, then suddenly a light shines. It's usually just a verse, just a word. Sometimes it comes through in a song, sometimes it comes through in a biblical verse. But whatever, in fact, it's ironically in those moments that things are darkest for us, when things seem to go bump in our night times, that we most, may be most aware that God is a sign for us. In a small home in Bethlehem, in your small homes, in your households, where you're able to share in the blessing even of this moment, a light has come, arise, shine. Tonight, we're praying for our homes, and in fact, you're going to find online and Facebook, you're going to find a way that you will be able to offer a little blessing for your home, just as we blessed the, uh, blessed the church as the home of God, as the home for, home for us. You'll be able to download uh, some information as to how you can offer a blessing. And then also you could pick up some chalk if you don't have some, so that you could put it on your lintel too. I, I have to tell you, we put the marks on the new paint right in the narthex of the church, but that's all right. It's going to be a sign for us. God is here and God wants to bless our homes. Arise shine your light has come so let's sing a song as we say amen for this evening let's sing a song that is very familiar but listen as to uh, the power of this song as it tells of the gifts of those uh, of those kings of the orient Fountain, moor and mountain, following yon. 
Confirmation students will now be leading us in our prayers. As uh, we join together in our prayers, let us pray that everyone will receive the blessings of Epiphany, responding to each bid with the words, Hear our prayer. For all the baptized, that even in hardship we grow deeper into the mystery of God, we pray. O God, shining with grace, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For believers in all the world's religions that God welcome also their devotion, we pray, O God, greater than the church in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. Did we? Kate, you want to take it? For scientists, that they probe what is both beyond and within what we see, we pray, O oh God, keeper of all knowledge, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For scientists, that they probe what is both beyond and within what we see, we pray. O oh God. Keeper of all knowledge, hear our prayer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh. 
for the leaders of nations, that they strive for peace and justice. We pray, O oh God, monarch of all people, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Who's next? Jazzy. Jazzy? Which one are we on? Ron five. Um, they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it's been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For Jazzy, from Jazzy, would you go to the prayers and read uh, for the Congress? For the gospel? For the Congress. Oh. Um. For the Congress of the United States, that God grant it wisdom for its task, we pray. O oh God, guidance for government in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all persons who have Beings that they assist to have little, we pray, O oh God, greater than the church in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For victims of injustice and, pre and prejudice, that their cause be heeded, we pray, O oh God, compassionate Savior, in our mercy. Hear our prayer. For children, that they be protected from harm, we pray. O oh God, loving parent, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I'm pretty sure that's all. Yeah, <laughs> For our homes that we may be blessed with and may witness the light of Christ's love within them, and that light may bring hope in the face of any fears. O oh God, who promises a place for us in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those, for all who are suffering from the coronavirus, that they come to health and wholeness. We pray, O oh God, greater than the church, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. Yes, and for our home, that we may be blessed with and may witness the light of Christ's love within them, and that light may bring hope in the face of any fear. One second, I gotta get to the back of the Oh God, who promises a place for us in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, and for those we too offer forget, too often forget that God meet their multitude of needs. We pray, O oh God, refuge of the downhearted, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For each of us, that as if a star, God guide us throughout the journey of life, we pray. O oh God, light of holiness, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all who have died in the faith, that at our end we join them in life with God. O oh God, goal of our day, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That God will receive these prayers for the sake of the divine infant before whom we kneel, we pray now and forever. Amen. Amen. We get to lift our light up right now, and we'll join together in this little light of mine. 
If you have candles or stars, you may want to light them. If you don't have candles or stars, you can use your phone. to shine is by joining together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, we offer a blessing for your home as we uh, encourage you once again to look at the other, uh, the other connection that was sent up uh, as you are able to take chalk and put the mark on your door that uh, acknowledges the blessing for your house. But right now, let me give the closing blessing that goes, Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, who proclaimed joy through the angels, who sent the shepherds with the good news and led the magi by the star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Kate, you get to give the final. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen.